The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians. Uh, my pleasure to be here Monday through Friday, every market day, 11 o'clock till noon. And let's get going. Thank you to our hosts for the three hours, that terrific three hours. Let's hope this can be another one. And uh, we've got program all the, all the way. What is today? Today is Tuesday, all the way through with uh, Andy Hecht included. And don't forget, front page of TFNN, check out Tom's special offer with the webinar tomorrow night. Dow's down 206 at 17,408. S&P's down 20 at 2,084. Comp index is down 48 at um, 50.53. You've got gold. Now, this is very interesting. Gold's up 3 at 11.07. Silver is down 4 cents at 15.25. Platinum is down to, now you've got high-grade copper. Oh, look at that. Down, let me just move this away here. Right, actually, let me just show you this chart that I'm looking at. Remember the chap made what we look for? Just three patterns in the market constantly. Straight line move, a cup formation or inverted V, it's the same pattern. Or, uh, sorry, cup formation or V pattern, that's the same part, A part B. Or the inverted, the arch or the inverted uh, v shape pattern. So just three patterns. And what's very important about this is you've got the E-minis doing that exact same thing, going to a couple of peak Ds over there. 21, 26, 25 was the last one back about the 19th of July. Plummets down to 2056, rallies up to 2109, fails, uh, has a, uh, a rally attempts that keep fading, and we've got another failure mode right now. And uh, so let me get rid of this, just move it to the side because I want to do some other things. I want to show you the high-grade copper. And, you know, Steve Rhodes showed a chart earlier showing that this is the first time that we actually have a divergence between the markets and copper um, in the sense that, how can I put it? Because we're looking only at charts, so your interpretation is your interpretation. In this particular instance, the way I look at it is that copper has been basically a harbinger of economic strength, not necessarily stock market strength. That's the difference. So the chart showed a lack of stock market strength. But most important about the whole thing is that those international, the weakness across the board internationally, the weakness in the commodities in general is saying that um, you will see home prices and economic uh, benefits that normally accrue to a high, high copper usage um, not unfolding at this particular time. And as a, as a uh, how can I put it? As a, there's your peak D. I was waiting for that D right there. Copper makes, makes the D in the 120-minute chart and then plummets. And the daily has got that sandwich effect of strong move yesterday. Failure move today. We've seen the same thing in the S&P. We'll People go through these charts as I as I move along. I just want to go to the copper to say that copper, as I read it, is really talking about some kind of international recession unfolding. That, that's just my interpretation. And if copper goes underneath the 220 level, um, that's just going to portend even weaker prices to come. So let's go on. So that's uh, I went to the copper. I went to look at crude oil. Crude there is no base of support. Maybe maybe gold is going to rally here, or maybe it's going to fall. Dollar, look at the dollar, DXY. Monthly chart, still holding very well, even though this week is starting off not all that good. Um, I don't like these extensions to the right, especially when you've had a successful lowercase h pattern with, with the high being taken out, in this case, the high of 97.78, and you closed above it at 97.86. So this is saying the dollar should try to continue higher. But if the dollar at 97.19, up three cents, fails and takes out the wick of this candle of the 31st of July and goes under 96.31, closes under 96. I don't see any reason why gold couldn't have at least a counter trend rally, especially with the um, 
the uncertainty now internationally, market-wise? Maybe it's a, 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 a currency of fear. We'll see. Um, we did try to go long a, um, a gold stock today. Took a six cent loss, just a small loss, but that's not the issue. The issue is uh, question of the day. Shouldn't the Chinese devaluation have caused dollar to rally, Basil? You know, the minute I saw the devalu devaluation, I thought, okay, let me quickly look at the dollar. And then I realized, no, 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 no. I, I was not surprised to see the dollar, um, let me go back to the dollar over here, that the dollar uh, attempted a rally, um, but couldn't hold the rally. And that's because there's a certain, hmm, how can I put it? There's a certain a divergence, a certain independence, a certain bifurcation, and the dollar is actually, um, the, the dollar is, is in its own independent orbit right now. And that orbit says, there's a real good chance that you're going to be making another U-shaped pattern here and not go anywhere for the whole month of August. Basically just trapped in a range between the 96s, give it a benefit of the doubt, call it the 96s and the 98s and just stuck there for a little while. That's kind of what I'm looking at. It's, all, it's almost like a test. This devaluation is basically a test. The dollar index is made up of only six currencies, euro, yen, and uh, LIBOR, wait, 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 um, yeah, Frank and the loony. Yes, thank you, Steve Rhodes, and, and a quick, uh, gave a quick mention of the dead. Yeah, don't forget that the dollar, uh, the euro part of it is um, just part of the other currencies. So you've got um, the dollar and then a mix of, of many different currencies. So in a sense, what we want to do is, I, I, I think I'm right in my own analysis. I don't know if it agrees with others. It doesn't really matter. Just in my own mind, what I'm trying to do is I've tried to separate. I remember when I did the UUP, which is the trading vehicle for the, uh, for the dollar, I remember looking at it and saying, hey, wait a minute. I'm looking at the dollar. This is FB slash G. And this is already a, a GC. Uh, the, the, the dollar appears to have buying pressure and remember that the dollar um, volume like the euro these are huge huge volumes in these instruments so all I can do is I can look at the chart and I can say to you that thus far as long as the UUP this is the power she's DB US dollar bull holds above 2460 2488 is the uh, Nine period moving out in the monthly. Actually, let's give it a little room. Holds above 25.30 on a closing basis. That's going to suggest that it's a high-level consolidation. When it breaks down and goes to 24, it says, hey, this is all over for now. It's a consolidation, but it's going to be a much wider trading band. And you remember, we, we were looking at this some time ago, and I was uh, suggesting that perhaps it's more worried about the dollar relationship to international trade, international, uh, the corresponding mediums that would be used in relation to the dollar, rather than the bonds. And look at the bonds, the U.S. dollar. Look at this. You've squeaked to another high. So this is F slash B. Wow. <laughs> F slash B. And leg B in the weekly chart and the monthly chart. See, this to me is outstanding action that up channel that we uh, have been talking about for so long in the in the 30 year US T bond continuous contract give the relationship to the T and X dot X look at this, this is the 10 year Treasury note rate and the T Y X T Y X dot X which is the 30 year and look at this you've got that Japanization of our bond yields continuing um, continuing and that's the nine period moving average. It's just a tad under it. So I don't see any change in the Fed at this particular point. If it happens, it's going to happen very suddenly. And it might happen despite, because I've read a lot about um, Yellen, that she's kind of independent of the market. She's just not really a market person. Um, so this kind of corresponds a lot. Isn't that interesting? You've got the president and you've got the Fed chairman who are not market people. Um, they don't really care too much about the market, and yet we've had the greatest bull market almost in, in, in history here uh, in the stock market and one of the greatest bear markets in history in the bond market um, so that yields have remained very low.
Isn't that fast? I always find that fascinating. That's why I always thought it was fascinating. Thought about this years ago. Never even anticipated that uh, Trump would get into the race because my thinking was I am. Um, Trump was going to be the guy that built the tallest building for the major, major, major top. Um, uh, but wouldn't it be surprising? Uh, this is just speculation. I'm, not, I'm going to go into this in much greater detail later on. I don't want to do it just yet, but I just wanted to say, well, wouldn't it be fascinating whether, uh, if you had Trump, the great capitalist, as a president, when the market starts to go down for the longer term, because you've had uh, President Obama, who's I would say he's, um, uh, I have no idea whether he's anti the stock market, but he never really talks about it as uh, in a positive way. Uh, so that's very, although well, I have no idea how much money he might have made or not made, but the fact is he's kind of ignored the stock market, never even used it as a marketing tool when he was running for re-election, and yet it's the greatest bull market. I mean, that's the way markets work. It's funny, the irony in this whole thing. Anyway, we're going to deal with, the speculation on who could be, who fits, who fits at this particular time, the socioeconomic, I'll, maybe I'll have another webinar on this, um, at this particular time, who fits, who's the little triangle at the top of the big triangle that completes the whole uh, image of, of, of a pyramid, who's the person that goes right at the top? Because everything else underneath that says that that's the, that's the fit that, that uh, we would be expecting. I'll talk about that sometime. And meantime, back at the ranch, uh, I think we've covered a lot of, of what we want to look If you're looking for a great opportunity to diversify your financial portfolio, consider the Principal Protected Market Safe CD from EverBank. They've just released the second running of their five year Market Safe Power Metal CD, which combines the power of gold, silver, and copper. You get exposure to three valuable metals in one index CD and have the potential to earn up to 45% capped upside payment at maturity if the metals increase in value across annual pricing dates. And should they decrease? No worries. There's zero risk to your deposited principal here, as you still get 100% of it back. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on the CD. Intrigued yet? The August 17th funding deadline is quickly approaching. So hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN for more information, including important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Everbank is a member of FDIC. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. 
Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Basil, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, folks. We're back. Just wanted to show something in the E-minis down 22.50. You see that, that uh, uh, coral color line there? No, it's not really. This, one, this particular one is more kind of uh, goldy brown. Um, that, that's a 200 period moving average support. It's a 10 minute chart and it shows that the, you, the objective of the Chapman wave is to take you from the lowest, most obvious low bar. That's this one right here at um, 10 minutes past this evening um, on the 11th at 2088.25. Had a rally, went to peak A, B, C, goes to D. And then it turns around at 4.30 in the morning and plummets, breaks it, and then starts to make that into a serious repellent line. And here we are pulling sharply away from that. That's usually a big negative because it should act as a magnet instead of uh, like, a, like a, uh, a propellant to the downside. So I had a question, but I'm going to go to this uh, first. The question was about the SLV. So I'll do the SLV. I've got the chart up. But give me a second. So what I really want you to do is to go to this if i hit the right button uh oh disappeared no no don't do that um i wanted to show you oh no <laughs> am i going to be able to get that back i want you to yeah there it is good so this is the boston globe today the business section the boston globe business section article by, um, who wrote this article? I'll see in a moment who wrote the article. But the headline is, remember what I've been discussing for quite some time? I said, for the first time, I'm starting to see the fundamentals in the biotech area, and that includes stuff that most people would never look at because if you're looking at the price of the, of the, the stocks or the looking, you're really not thinking about, and we live in the area, so it's really obvious to us, this whole Kendall Square, the MIT relationship with the biotechs, the way the biotechs are, are, are overpaying for all the, the personnel that they're getting right now, the way they aren't just overpaying, they're overpaying by, from what I understand, from what I'm told, between 35 to maybe 45% for whatever it is that they're doing in real estate. Also, there's a glut. I mean, they are just, they're everywhere. They, many of their biotech firms has turned um, Boston into the headquarters from international quarters. And so that to me, that was the fundamental side of it. But I also said, I'm starting to hear um, and then read about the response from the FDA to the drugs. And all of a sudden, they started to put limitations. They, they'd never had limitations before. Well, here's an article in the Boston Globe, Mass, that's Massachusetts, Bill seeks to rein in prices of some drugs. That is some drugs. It isn't all drugs. But you know what? When there is a big question mark that looms over a particular area, you have to take it. This is by Robert Wiseman. So we've got Caitlin O'Brien pays hundreds of dollars a month for medications. There's a picture. Um, and, yeah, O'Brien. I wonder, I don't think there's a relation, but okay. So drug companies are facing a new campaign to contain treatment costs, this time with proposed rules in Massachusetts that would include a first-in-the-nation cap on some prices. An alliance of lawmakers, consumers, and health insurers is pushing for a law that would force biotechnology and pharmaceutical companies to justify their prices by disclosing how much they spend on research, production, and marketing. 
It also would allow the state's health policy commission to limit the prices of especially costly drugs, something not done anywhere in the country. It is done in other countries, but not here. Drug prices are by far the fastest growing part of healthcare costs, said Brian Rosman, Research Director at Healthcare for All Boston Consumer Advocacy, Advocacy Group that helped draft the Massachusetts bill. The whole system is a black box. There is very little ability for consumers who go to a pharmacy and pay a copay to understand whether it's fair, a, a fair price. Okay, similar transparency legislation has been filed where New York California, Pennsylvania, Texas, North Carolina, and Oregon. Biggest markets, though the specifics of each bill vary. So that's really interesting. Look at that. I'm right the headline. And I have to tell you something. Those are the things that make investors a little nervous. I, I shouldn't say a little nervous. I'd say uh, a little nervous. Very nervous. So um, and let me go to the IBB. Remember we spoke about this the other day. There it is, down 4 and 366, the iShares, Biotech, uh, NASDAQ Biotechnology, ETF. And I suspect this week we will go uh, into a sell signal, upgraded immediately to a sell mode if the IBB continues week. We are short, we are short right from 393, high all-time high was 400. And um, we've added and we've got uh, the inverted uh, uh, short shares and all that stuff. But what's really important about it is this is the first time that you can actually see in the daily and starting now in the weekly a tidal change. You see the technicals are all failing miserably, but the monthly chart is still very strong in the MACD, but not the stochastic. I'll be right back. That was the Chapman Tiger Editions Hour, and we will look at silver. That was down 230, S&P's down 22. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting tfnn.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will 
will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, 6 videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Tom O'Brien has just announced a live online workshop taking place Wednesday, August 12th, six trades for September. This special event will be open to all subscribers to his daily newsletter, Market Insights. Tom will walk you through six trade setups in the market he's identified setting up for September. Two long positions, two short positions, and two option trades. New subscribers will also receive a free copy of his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, an $88 value. But we're not done yet. We're also including a Tiger's Den membership as part of all Market Insights subscriptions at no cost as well. You get Tom O'Brien's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, 30 days of his newsletter, Market Insights, access to his live online workshop, Six Trades for September, and access to the Tiger's Den. This offer is only valid for two weeks, so don't miss out. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to Market Insights at the front page of TFNN.com today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. A uh, couple of questions we've got during the break. Let me just check on the time. Yeah, we've got time. I just want to quickly say Apple. Remember we discussed Apple? I said there's a real good chance of this being a hat trick top. I, I, you know, I never took the trade as a short position. I had everything there saying, why not take it? You had that road wave spike up back in July. I don't know. I'm not sure why. Even now, I think uh, it's going deeper down. So Apple's made a peak F top. That's a hat trick potential, hat trick top. If this month closes decisively under the 9 EMA and there's a rally and then it goes a second time under the 9 EMA, um, that's just going to say, hey, Apple's done for now. Just that's it's, it's a hat trick top. We took me weeks and months before it even has a chance to get back even close to the highs. And that goes for both the monthly and the weekly and the daily, of course, way, way back gave that sell signal that was a peak yet 134.54 back in late April. So it's going to be very interesting. I see no more than uh, rallies to the, is it 115? The 122 nine period moving average on the weekly is going to be really serious. Between that and 125, I just don't see any chance of Apple in the shorter term going higher um, than even 122, oh, even 118, 119. Uh, not good. So, uh, and then I had a question about junk, a J and K. Uh, that's um, Spider Barclays high yield uh, bond fund. It's testing the left side low of 37.26 May of the week of the December the 19th of 2014. So that's 37.26. The low today so far is 37.24. We've just taken it out by two cents. What that says is that the bar that takes out an arch formation, chapter wave arch formation, lowercase h pattern, the bar that takes out the left side low, that's this weekly bar, has this week and at the latest next week to bounce back, close over 37.26, and if that's the case, then you've got to see a push to the nine period moving average of 37.96 in the weekly. I don't know if we can get to 38.74, the nine period um, moving average of the monthly, but if we did, then I'd be looking at the H, this lowercase H pattern in the monthly, going to an H pattern like that, coming down, testing, breaking, and then if successful, it has another H pattern coming up. I don't know if it's that big. There are another H pattern to the 3870s. All right, so I hope that helps you there. Um, uh, and this is that uh, perfect uh, dreaded H pattern that we talk about in the Chapman Wave. Look at that. Down, and then it makes an arch formation. Little ones, little ones, and then there's a big one. Oh, I, don't, I don't have time to put my CD up right now to show you. This is, a, this is a perfect example. Okay, next thing was silver. And silver is acting quite well here. It's at 1463. It's, down, uh, it's up nine cents. And what I'm looking at here is that there's a left side, right side price time match, which goes to the 13th of August to test the high of 1497 and we are 1463 right now. 
Will it do that? I don't know. But there's this pattern that I talk about, the cup formation that forms a Chapman wave inside wedge, and the inside wedge has a target of a left side, right side, price sign match. Ooh, a lot of talking there for people who don't know my work. Left side equals the midpoint of the low to the right side should take you the same amount of time, that amount of time to that, to that pivot point right there, what I call the plumb line, that's the plumb line right there to the low, the low of 1373, made on the 24th of July, 1373, 13, and that was a recycle, that's A, B, C, that's actually a D, recycle D, right there, and then D gets an up arrow, so we've got a potential for left side, right side, price, time match. So that's what I'm thinking. That's why I'm saying that the, the dollar might not move much around here. But most importantly, what we're looking at is this is the opportunity. I'm a little upset that we actually got stopped out of the, the, the gold position that we attempted to get into today. Hey, that's the way it is. I mean, you, you, you do your best. I just wanted a fairly tight stop. I don't want to mess around in this market. I can always get back in. So this is what we're looking at. Silver. There's the bar. This took way longer to do, so this is a different connotation altogether. Now you have to wait for the daily, which has really good technicals, the weekly to improve, and that's going to say once you're above the nine period moving average of 14.62 14 on a closing basis, you're at 1463 right now, but it's not Friday afternoon at 4. It is still early in the week. Um, one and a quarter, one and a little bit of hours, one, one day and a little a couple of hours. Uh, so we're looking at Silver leg A, this is what I call a gray leg A up. I wouldn't be surprised that arch pattern that I've drawn. So the answer in the den is yes, it's still looking good. And um, I would even venture to say that if gold holds up quite nicely today, and right now it's up, now it's gone a little high, it's at five, up 570. If it holds quite nicely today, you could be looking at... Um, even now, it would not be too late to start at least nibbling on, on a couple of the gold and maybe silver stocks right now. Look at the IYT. Let's move on. The IYT has made a peak E in the daily at the 200 period moving average. And what's happened is the weekly chart is just horrible. And this was a heads up because it's a hat trick top in the monthly chart. It's saying at peak F top, did I lose all my notation? No, no, there it is. Let's put the down arrow in. That uh, monthly peak F back in 2014, was it November? Yeah, November at, uh, at 167.80 in the IYT, the IGS Transportation Average. Hey, th this is serious stuff. And I'm expecting that there's another H pattern that's forming right here, a little H pattern right there, and that it's going to fail. So just be real careful at this particular point. Yeah, you can get counter-trend rallies. My bias now is to be looking. We had a long position. We bought it um, on Friday, and we had a great move up. Uh, no, we bought it, I think, Thursday. So I don't remember what it was. Uh, small long at 77.50. And we made 40 cents because I put in a real tight stop. The very next, and this is on uh, Monday, we bought it again at the, at the low, uh, not the low, just about the low. And it was a fantastic move to the upside. It went from our entry point of 77.20 um, to 78.75. And then, woof, it takes it out today. You know, this is real, so we're a break-even trade. We've got 40 cents out of two trades there on this Exxon trading at 76.44 down 231. This is lousy action. And it's saying to me, don't get carried away with this whole commodity thing. It might be just gold and, and silver that's, that's overextended to the downside. And it just wanted a bounce because you want the, all the commodities. Look at this. High-grade copper. High-grade copper gave it all back. Now, this is what I wanted to talk about, if you don't mind. You see this chart here that I show my subscribers to my opening call, and we've had some real nice calls. So we, we base it every morning. We base uh, my analysis on this particular, start off with this particular chart, the daily Dow using Chapman Wave techniques of arches and cups and uh, trend lines. And what we're looking at is, I had said, there's a chance that this takeoff here technically seemed to have the same characteristic as the ones here, like this that failed and had a retest, like this one here, where was it, this one, this one here, which uh, 
failed and had yeah, rally and then fail and retest. The Dow's done this numerous times. And look, today we've done. Now, if today we take out the low of yesterday of 17,375, That'll, be, that'll, that'll not be a good sign. Most of the time we've had higher, higher lows as we've come out of this uh, potential, in this case, a trough D, um, not getting to the 17,034 level, but instead getting to 17,279, if there was going to be another counter-trend rally. So that makes tomorrow really important. Why? Because in this particular pattern, you don't get more than one sharp down move to give, get to take back all the gains from the previous day and then gap up the next day and make a new high. So this will be A and that will be B if, in fact, tomorrow there's a high above 17.629.30. What on earth could have you do that? I don't know. I just don't know. I don't see any pockets of strength. When we spoke about the IBB, uh, one of the great, look at this, one of the great market leaders of all time, I say all time because look at this chart here from the breakout above the, this black line, the nine period moving average back in December of 2011. Just take a look at that chart. Not once was there a close below the nine period moving average. Let me just say that again. In the last month of 2011, the IBB broke above, closed above the nine period moving average at 104.90. Last month, the high was 400.79, and it hadn't closed under this nine EMA once. It had actually only broken it on the downside and always closed above it maybe two times, one, two, three times in all, that, in all that time. So this is remarkable. It still hasn't given a, a signal in the monthly. I've got the signal, but it isn't an official signal yet. And I've taken the signal from the RSI, the unbalanced volume, um, the stochastic, but it isn't an official signal because how can you make a signal on a monthly chart when you're only one week into the, um, the second week into the weekly ch into the monthly chart. So I'm saying I've speculated based on the daily and the weekly charts that this could turn out to be, and we don't know, but we could turn out to be the first time that the selling pressure in the biotechs is being accompanied by, and we'll be following this, mutual fund selling for the very first time in ages, and when, once, when one of the biggies starts, the rest follow. Number two, the stochastic failed completely to confirm the last highs. It's been going down, diverging negatively as the price went higher. And for the first time, the histogram, the vertical bars, those are volume bars right there, but those little green bars are starting to shrink. Yeah, it's the histogram, meaning that the nine period differential, the green line, is getting closer to the red line, the slow moving average. All right. So that's, that's very important to me. And the other thing is, to coincide with that, you've got the XLV, which is the S&P um, Select Healthcare Spider Fund, giving no signal whatsoever other in the monthly chart on price, but it is in the technicals. But what you have had here is 77.40 and 77.27. Let me type that in. This is a potential 77.40 and 77.27. And that is a potential Chapman wave. Let me put it in here. Chapman wave two bar reversal. We don't know. I'm just putting it in here as a note and I'll have to make it gray because it's not as important as it sounds. But we're going to be watching it closely. Why? Because we have seen over the years that this two-bar reversal, very quiet two-bar reversal, fractionally lower high the following month from a peak D, E, or F in the monthly. Well, it can happen anyway, but I'm saying, yeah, in this case, the monthly. As the technicals are failing, so no signal yet in the monthly visually 
in terms of the, the candles here, it's the first time you've got a red candle followed by a green candle and immediately followed by a red since back in July, was it? Yep, there it is. Um, back in June into July and August of 2013, two years ago exactly. So this is very important. And you've got what I call a right arm extension in the weekly chart. And that's suggesting that that peak D, the second peak D that was made in 7740 with a double top, with the MACD failing and the stochastic failing and the on-balance volume failing and the relative strength failing, suggests that there could be a sudden very sharp move in the IBB at some point. And if that's the case, watch out for that low, those series of lows there, 73 and the 73 area, and the, sorry, in the XLV, I said IBB, I meant the XLV trading at 7507 down 87 cents. I should also mention we are short my opening call, the IBB and the XLV. Now what's really important about this is that you've also got an arch formation. I drew this in and said how on earth when it's trading up in the 76s could you get a left side right side price time match to 73.86 that comes in on the 13th of August? I have no idea. But I can just tell you that I have a sense that we are starting to accelerate lower and all the bout, all the all those little modicums of strength that you would normally see intraday and, and, and buying from mutual funds, I don't think you're going to see it here, and I'll explain why. In this particular instance, the XLV has been one of the absolute, the stellar performer, one of the great performers as well. It's even a little bit better visually uh, on a chart than the IBB and very little known. Most people hardly talk about it except the people who are long. And congratulations if you're long. If you're long, I still wouldn't be clearing out the whole thing. I'd just be nibbling, taking away some of my profits so that I've, I've locked in some profits and I'd be tightening up my stops. And first, third position I'd have off. Second, third position I'd have with a quite a tight stop of about 73.50. But you've got to give it re a, a rebounding strength could bounce a point and a half or so and then come back down. But I, that's where I'd start being very hesitant about holding the long position. And my third position, I, I'd keep it um, because, you know, nobody's perfect. Maybe, I, you know, who knows? It could certainly look that that failed to come back down. So maybe this is just a great, great um, holding pattern and a high-level consolidation. I don't think so. But that would say that somehow or other we're going to have a tumble into... Uh, the 13th, uh, maybe a, a day or so later, which that would take us uh, below, uh, into the semi, below 74. Hey, I'll be back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician's Hour. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNM.com.
quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. So uh, a quick thing about Facebook. Facebook's at 9332. It's down 83 cents. If Facebook cracks 92, 91 is absolutely imperative to hold. When it starts to trade in the 90s, I would say I've got a peak F top in the daily, a peak E confirmed in the weekly, and a leg D with a, a Chapman Wave two-bar reversal at the top from 99.24 to 98.74. Um, that's going to make this, uh, it's, it's one of the terrific acting stocks. Maybe it's a high-level consolidation, but it's being impacted by the general market, and it does look like it's going to make uh, that um, MACD is is holding one in the weekly chart with the stochastic has that five bar reversal and that's that's a negative thing at 81 percent if by friday it starts to trade well under 80 percent in the stochastic that's going to be tough so it has to get to the 96s by thursday to save the day hope that helps you in the day that was a quick uh, question um i'm the bottom in the vix yep and then i want to go to our caller we've got on the line let me just put the vix in while i do that uh yeah the vix at 1397 you, I want to see by Friday afternoon, again, I've been desperately trying to get this VIX to hold up so that I can at least get a trend in place with the VIX. And the trend needs to be at 1493 to 1520 by Friday afternoon. It's got to hit it into week and then close at Friday above the 16.15 uh, 200-period exponential moving average for the second time in in in. in well, months, eight months. All right, let's go to Mark and Ford Collins. Mark, how are you? Good, how are you? <clears throat> I'm well, thank you. Hey, just had a quick, can you help um, me with what your wave count is um, daily, maybe weekly, too, on the XLF? So the XLF is the S&P Select Financial Spider. It's got Berkshire Hathaway. It's got uh, WFC, uh, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, et cetera, et cetera. It's trading at 25.16, down 27 cents. No big deal, but it is down a dollar ten, uh, 1.10 percent, um, and that's that's important. I think that this has got uh, an H pattern, a weekly peak. I've called this a peak E. Let me explain why. Let me just drag this over. We'll do this quickly. The oh 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 yes, there's an alternate count. A B. Oh, it's a little messy. You know what? If you don't mind the count, I'll do. Uh, if I can, I'll try to do it tomorrow. But I'm just going to say to you, I did call it an E, um, based on a different wave count. But in all, or, to be really strict, it's basically an A minus at this particular point. Very unusual right. to go to a recovery high, especially in a daily chart, an A minus and then fail. So this is A. Um, real quickly, twenty-three thirty. 
one. Okay, this is ABC, and a little ABC arch formation is forming. So it That's make right. it real simple. Yeah. If if the XLF of S and P Financials at twenty five sixteen at any point in the next week does not close above twenty five fifty five, but instead closes below twenty four seventy, it'll tackle the left side low of twenty four eighty five. Uh, 24, yeah, that's the 2485 is really important. If it, t it takes out 2485, then I've got a confirmation that the weekly is a peak E and that the monthly is a leg E potential peak E. All of these charts are suggesting very strongly that we've got monthly tops coming in here that are not the usual. This is very different. This is giving me confirmation with very weak technicals that I have to consider the letters E and F as really important in the monthly charts. The SPX, for instance, is in a peak, potential peak a G, very unusual, um, and the Dow has this alternate count because the diamonds, the Dow diamonds, are in fact at a uh, peak E. So I'm taking these monthly charts really seriously for the first time. I have to consider that everything I'm analyzing has a, a larger context where the tide is turning, but it's turning in the greater formation. I hope that helps you. Yes, yeah, I just was a little confused on that. Okay, and uh, yeah, it is a little confusing on the daily, but not the weekly, not the monthly, and they the bigger tides. So thanks for calling, Mark. Folks, stay tuned. You've got uh, you've got Kevin Hinks coming up. You've got Options Hour. Should be a wonderful show as always. Shows all day today. Check out my opening call. I think you'll find it very interesting. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This is TFNN.